Hello and welcome, my name is Jonathan Ringer and I'm here to talk about Flakes. Uh, this is to commemorate the release of Nyx 2.4 and Flakes is just a little blurb here but they're a pretty new interesting way to interact with Nyx and I think it provides quite a bit of usability over the existing tooling which was great if you're working on Nyx packages but uh, if you're ever working on out of tree code, Flakes are definitely a superior way of interacting with Nyx. Um, and so let's go over an example of why flakes are a thing. So here is an example project that I have. This is called Nix template. Um, essentially what it does is it will just allow you to kind of generate a template for a given uh, ecosystem. So there's like standard name dot make derivation in Python, uh, a Nixos module, so on and so forth. Uh, this is kind of a nice if um, you are constantly kind of adding packages. Maybe you're using out of tree code. Maybe you're adding new things to Nix packages. Uh, but um, just the example, you can do something like this. You can open up test.nix and it'll give you essentially a very boilerplate little template of what to do. Um, and so then this is a good example of some out of tree code. And I'll go over creating a flake and uh, what what type of aspects of the difficulties of packaging stuff for Nix is kind of solved by flakes. So let's begin with the old way of doing out of tree code within uh, Nix. And so then usually you would see two files. This is going to be the default.nix and then this is also going to be the shell.nix. Uh, the default.nix usually would build a derivation and then shell.nix would be a way for you to get a development shell. Uh, sometimes you could actually just reference default.nix from shell.nix and that would also work um, and that would be fine. So the, the previous uh, usage would be something like this. Um, obviously for shell.nix this, this would automatically kind of be uh, the default so that would be the same as just writing nix shell. Um, but there's a few issues with just using this old paradigm. Namely, um, when I look at the file, uh, you'll see this usage here, which is, let me make this a little bigger, okay. Uh, you see this usage here with the angle brackets, uh, and this is the, the first issue with the old paradigm, is that uh, where this Nix packages is coming from is something called the Nix path. And so then if I get out of this shell and I do echo Nix, Nix path, there will be a Nix packages defined here. And so then this goes to my channels and I happen to be following the Nixos channel for, for that. Um, and the reason why this is uh, terrible for kind of user experience is that this will be different essentially on every machine. Since this is like in my case, this is by the channel, but the channel is determined by the system or my user. And so then you have all these variables about you know, does the user have any overlays? What channel are they following? Where on the channel are they following? Was the last time they updated? Maybe it's super out of date. And so then you get all these issues of, Nix may be able to build a very reproducible derivation, but the problem is that it was very difficult for you to actually arrive at the same derivation. And so then there was some ways for this to kind of be remedied. And one of them is called NIV. And NIV is actually still, for, for what it's trying to accomplish, is still a great tool. Uh, it's a Haskell project, but uh, what it would do is you would um, kind of just say that, hey, I would like to add a dependency, um, and so you would do init, and it would give you like a sources file, and essentially there would be a JSON document of kind of what dependencies you wanted to reference. And then instead of using the import angle bracket next packages convention, you would do something like this. And so then you'd be importing from your sources.nix. This way, uh, you aren't using the systems Nix packages, but you're using a pinned version. And this this worked quite well for for uh, the problem that it's trying to solve. Um, but it was still kind of weird that it was kind of tacked on and not the default. Some people used it, some people didn't. Some people kind of just did this in line, and there there wasn't really much of a convention around it. Uh, and that's the main pain point. Um, but that is one thing that Flake solves is the ability for you to define your dependencies. So there's also a flake.lock 
and this will look very similar actually because it does essentially the same thing um, it's just now this is part of the flick utilities um, the other issue that flick really helps solve is what is actually returned by an out of tree repository so before i mentioned that default.nix which would usually build a derivation and then if we go into the um, expression itself then i have the, the derivation that would be here but the problem with that paradigm is that that's not consistent so in this example i happen to be returning a derivation from my default.nix but that was not always the case you could return an overlay you could return you know uh, like a list of derivations uh, an adder set of derivations that's also really common um, maybe they apply an overlay and they actually return all of nix packages with their package exposed anyway and that's the that's the issue is that you don't you don't really know what you're getting in the auto tree code. Usually, you, it was bespoke to each repository, and there's no like conventions around what was going to be exposed. And so that's the other thing that Flakes really takes care of. Here is um, is that you will have a consistent amount of uh, adders that are going to be on the output. So they call this the Flake schema. But you can define checks, you can have packages, default packages, which are arrived applications, which are supposed to be ran by some Nix run utilities. Uh, your dev shell, so you no longer have a shell.nix. Uh, you just have one flick.nix, and then it will expose everything about that. If you want to have system configurations, you can now do that as well. If your out of tree code also has Nixos modules that is export, so for example, I have Nix template, which is a user application, but if I had another repository, which say exposes a service, then I could also expose those modules so that people can import the modules and use those as well. Uh, I can expose overlays, um, kind of everything. And also templates too, uh, if, if you're, um, like for example here is something where this is a build utility that brings Nix support to SPT, which is a Scala-based build tool chain. Uh, you can expose a template. Uh, they don't. They they happen not to, I believe. Maybe they do. But you could expose a template where you automatically kind of have it. No, they do not. Uh, but they can expose a template where uh, then you kind of have like the default configuration for, um, say, building with a SPT derivation flow. So. Okay, let's begin. How to create a flake. So to begin, you can do nix flake init, and this will give you a very, very, very simple uh, flake template. This is very bare bones, and let's go over what these do originally. So description, this is just some metadata on your flake. Uh, this probably isn't the most important now in its current iteration, but Maybe in the future, once flakes get more support, then it might be nice to have this metadata uh, to kind of help search through all the available flakes as essentially any kind of version control repository now is ability to ship, uh, has the ability to ship packages in a well-defined way. Uh, next down, we have outputs. So there are also inputs, but we just don't have any right now. So I'm just gonna uh, add one. So let's just do Nix packages and we can have Nix packages equal whatever. Um, but it's by convention, there's uh, a few well-supported platforms. So one of them is GitHub. You can also use Git. Git's also available, but GitHub will use the GitHub API. Um, and then you can do something like, uh, I want Nixos, Nix packages. And so then this is the URL syntax. And that should be good. Um, here, uh, this syntax. So this is gonna be GitHub. It's gonna be the API. That's going to use Nixos here is going to be the owner. Nix packages is going to be the repository. If I wanted to, I could do another slash, and this could be a particular branch. So I could say something like master if I wanted to follow directly from master, uh, or I could do something like release 2105 if I wanted to do the current stable, so on and so forth. Um, the other part of this is that since it is a URL, you're also able to use the arguments. So if you aren't comfortable using the little convenient slash, you can also do something like this where it's ref equals. And so then here, uh, you, we will be referring to this particular branch. Uh, and you can even continue this too. So like if you want a particular rev off the branch, then you can also specify that. Um, that would be less often that you would use this. Uh, some other things that are supported here too. Um, you can also have a point to a local repository and do something like path 
and then you can give it a full path. So you could do something like home, John, projects, Nix packages, and then anything that I kind of am editing locally within my own Nix packages will be, now be reflected in this input. Um, there's a few others. GitLab is one. Um, Git, fetch URL, uh, kind of everything that is supported by built-ins is also supported by these. Uh, there's more information on the documentation. Okay, but now you have the given inputs and you can do outputs. So outputs here, uh, you'll notice this guy, self, he's a little special. Uh, this kind of refers to the flick itself. So kind of, uh, you can do self.inputs, you can do self.outputs. It's kind of just a way to reference everything. Like self.description is also available. Uh, it's kind of a way to just have a uh, fixed point of the entirety of the flick itself. Um, and so then that's probably the biggest like abstraction branch that we have right now is that before we uh, with old paradigm uh, default.nix and shell.nix is that we were just evaluating the X code and just whatever evaluated to was returned to us. And so something like Nix shell would just expect like a derivation to be returned. But um, here now we actually have a flake. So a flake is kind of knows, knows more about its structure. And here packages, um, x86. The next thing that you notice is that, hey, there's an explicit uh, architecture and platform um, that is being added. And this is one of the big changes as well, is that one of the things that Flakes kind of really prioritize is something called purity. And before it was just kind of assumed. You kind of just assumed that like, hey, we would impurely get your uh, architecture and your platform and we would just kind of know what we wanted from that but that is no longer the case um, so when you go to execute something like nix run or nix develop or nix shell or nix build um, the when you invoke the command is when it will try to look for the related system that you have and then it will tell you whether or not it was able to find one so now, now you have to explicitly opt in to what architectures and platforms you actually support with your flakes, uh, which is a bit of, bit of a divergence, but uh, on the whole, I think that's great. Uh, default package, this will just be for Nix build. Um, and so then if you just say Nix build with no other assumptions, then it'll look at the current directory's flake and then just build that. Um, and we'll go from there. So this is a pretty bare bones and we would really like this to be able to have knowledge of my current repository, which is the Nix template. And so next I'm gonna look at what my old flake file looks like. So I'm gonna just remove the one that we auto-generated and I'm gonna move back my flake.nix.back to flake.nix. And we'll take a look at what I had uh, before. Um, and here, uh, this is a little bit more fleshed out and so um, here at utils just kind of helps with uh, kind of parameterizing for each system. So before I showed you um, like the packages that x86, 64, now we just kind of parameterize over that. Um, and so then this just kind of exposes a few things that are, are nice to have, quality of life improvements. Um, this is a convention that I use here, which is uh, to always kind of package your packages as an overlay and then just use the overlay. It simplifies a lot of cases where um, you want kind of coherence between different systems. And, and what I mean by that is, uh, let's say you're using this flake from this repository and flake from that repository, but their Nix packages references are actually different. So like, then you'll be pulling in two versions of glibc and two versions of OpenSSL. Um, what you really want is to have just kind of overlays and then you have one coherent system. Um, you kind of have a compromise of you give up some reproducibility because maybe actually that version of glibc is not compatible or something. But on the whole, uh, what you get is a more co uh, coherent system where you're able to reuse dependencies more. And so then I just have a little function that kind of helps uh, parameterize this. But the, the bulk of the, the the logic is down here. So the legacy packages, this is essentially the old import Nix packages, but for a particular system. Um, and so the legacy packages will be, um, once it's fed into this the dot e each system, it will then expose a 
a pair. So these legacy packages, you can see now that I have it for Darwin, Linux, and x86-64 uh, Linux. I am exposing the whole Nix packages with my um, package added to it. So if I do something like this, and this is the kind of calling convention that you would see in Flakes, is uh, that URL, I could do something like um, Nix build GitHub John Ringer slash Nix template. And I could do something like that. And that is a valid URL. And it will go in a build, 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 build. Um, but what I could also do too is just do this, and that will do the local one and then the default package, which I did uh, have set. So here it will go through, it will build. Great. Um, and then also the next develop is somewhat similar. So now here, actually, let me get out of that. Um, I should have. So my default system is 1.550. But then if I go into here, cargo version, you can see that I haven't updated the flake on this repository for a while. So I actually got an older version of cargo. And um, yeah, but then people are able to share my environment as well. So let's go back to the flake. Okay, so I show legacy packages. This is all next packages. And then out of there, I just like to expose these, uh, the packages. This is just so that if you do like, Nix build, Nix template, then that's where that Nix template comes from. Otherwise, I would need to do something like legacy packages dot x86 64 Linux dot Nix template, and then I'd be able to build that. But since I have it as one of the packages that are exposed, I can use that nice shorter syntax. And then um, when Nix build invokes, it just knows that, hey, I'm also going to look for one that actually has this suffix on it um, and that's the other. okay so uh, next thing uh, flake dot nix um, that this this kind of solves though is if we go down we have our packages default package uh, I guess I could show it over here so let me get this nice and big So the default package, when I just do Nix build, it's going to look at the, the default package and it will be able to find that. Uh, applications are somewhat similar, but this is when I do Nix run. Uh, and then I want to do something like do help. Then that's going to be where it finds that package. Uh, Hydra jobs, this is really cool. So if you have your own Hydra instance, uh, then you just need to make sure that flakes are enabled and if you point it at your repository then all it needs to do is just consume what the hydro jobs are. The nice thing about this as well is that then you're also able to expose um, maybe certain builds for different platforms in a more ergonomic way. Uh, instead of having something like a separate release.nix which was the old existing paradigm which then it would evaluate all those derivations. Uh, checks. Uh, this is also kind of cool. Uh, you can do Nix flake check now. And what this will do is just kind of locally it will build all these things. Uh, it looks like uh, I don't have something set up correctly, but um, yeah, th those checks are nice just because then they're kind of just like unit tests, but at, at, a, at a Nix level. And then down below, this is kind of where the reuse uh, out of tree code kind of comes into play is that then you can expose your overlays and your Nixos modules. Um, since this since this, is, this is just a user application, I don't have really anything for the Nixos modules. I just have these as like stubs right now. But this overlay, uh, the nice thing about that is that then other packages are able to consume that. So for example, uh, the, the example I'm going to use is this SPT derivation. Uh, so I'm going to go down to where they have the Flake example. And so if I did say uh, I'm going to try to package a Scala-based um, program I can go up here to the top I can add one more entry we don't need inputs again that's a little repetitive actually I didn't need that okay uh, type owner and this should be fine when I do next flake uh, update sorry next flake
dot URL Let's grab this URL. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's use template. Now here, when I'm in here, uh, nix flake lock, you can do dash dash update input and you can give the explicit input and it does have tab completion, which is nice. Um, and then you can see here that in my flake.lock, there's now a new entry and it works. Um, and then how you would apply this is that then in here, in your outputs, you would now have access to the SPT derivation input that you have. And this now references that flake. So this flake.nix, which is part of this repository now, has been loaded in. And you can see that it only exposed one member, which is the overlay, but that's fine because this is kind of assumed to be composed with whatever build system that you're doing. So here with my overlays, I can do my local overlay, but then I can also apply the SPT derivation.overlay. And now when I go into a Nix REPL um, and I load up my local flake, I can now look at my legacy packages.spt. Linux. And then when I'm in here, I can go to SPT. And now it should have a, uh, was it derivation? Yeah, it's now, it's, now it's a make derivation. So this is uh, what the overlay uh, overlay is now applying. And I can now consume that package from here. So if I wanted to, I can just make another thing like this, but instead of doing rest off platform, then I could do something like sbt.make derivation. And um, that doesn't exist within Nix packages. That is published on some other repository, but I was able to grab it from the other repository, take it into my flake, then reuse it within the context of my repository and do what I need to do. And so then this is really good for like uh, the NOR, uh, the Nix user repository as well. If you want to reference their flakes, then you can just freely kind of consume them. Um, and yeah, um, since there's also the lock file, now you have complete control over the reproducibility and everything is good. So um, yes. Uh, in summary, Nix Flakes, they allow you to pin your dependencies with uh, greater accuracy. They allow you to then have the well-defined shape. And now people that kind of visit your repository, they already know how to kind of consume uh, what they want. So that is that's the main benefit. Um, thank you for tuning in and you have a wonderful day.